Oh, thank you. Welcome to Mondays with Mark. I've waited all week. Oh, don't you love my sound effects? I'm so glad it is finally Monday. I've waited all week for this moment. I, I actually don't sit around waiting all week for this moment, but I have enjoyed and looked forward to and planning this program. I'm excited that Jeff Steinberg, who I saw on the Old Time Gospel Hour back in 1972 when I was, of course, living here in Houston before I went to Liberty myself. And he's going to be here. He's got a great story. If you've never heard it, you're going to love it. He's a great singer. He's a funny, funny guy. He's a humorist, a comedian. And hello, everybody coming in. Lynn Perry, Lauren Whaley, Martha T. Sanders, Lisa Massey, Jeanette Boland, Jonas... Good evening, Rebecca Rowe, Campbell, Myra Parrish. Look at all you coming in. I'm so glad you're tuning in. I hope you look forward to this as much as I do. Okay, to just to kick things off, I want to tell you about my week. I've eaten a lot. I, you know, when I'm off, I eat out a lot. I eat in restaurants. That's the reason I'm thankful for restaurants because I don't cook that much. When I do, I hate it because I have to clean it up or somebody has to, and I hate cleaning up. So I usually don't cook. So I go out and eat a lot. Well, Colleen, you know my friend Colleen. You've seen her on different videos I've done. She and her son and I went to a place. Well, I'll just show you the video. This is my week in restaurant reviews. And it ends with a friend who came to my house who can play the piano. Enjoy this. Okay, I'm at the new L.A. Crawfish Restaurant in Houston with Colleen and her son, Taylor. And Taylor's going to show us the correct way to dissect a crawfish and how to eat it. First, you're going to grab the, pinch the tail at the tip, yeah. give it a twist. Then if you want, you can suck all that out of there. Mm. Then you're going to go ahead and pinch it. Pinch the tail, crack it down the tail. Give that a pull off. There you go, the tail. It's all gone. And for good measure, what? Oh, there's juices and stuff in the head. This is another Mexican restaurant you've got to try if you ever come to Houston. It's called Loma Linda, and they're known for their puffy tacos. Here we are at Ninfa's on Navigation. Colleen, isn't this one of our favorite places to eat? It is. We're going to enjoy it tonight. We've been eating at Mama Ninfa's for, well, since I was a little kid. Long time. And she invented the fajita. She invented it. It was invented right here at Ninfa's, N-I-N-F-A-S, right here, Ninfa's, on Navigation. What are you getting? I'm going to try the fajita burger. Hello. Hello. This was, this chef was uh, selected on the chew. He won the chew for the best chef in, in the different cities that, that tried out for it. Best it's hamburger? The best, well, no, he just did the burger and it was the, it's just called the fajita burger. Now it's Saturday. And we're at Houston's, yes. which is one of our favorite restaurants. Uh, I always get the grilled chicken salad. Oh, wow. It's amazing. Oh, oh and look, look at, at the artichokes. This. We just saw that special about artichokes. And look, they're already here. Oh, my God. One more time, we forgot to take photos of our food. We did. Until after it was over. Here's the remains. This was, it was good though. Now we're in a store at the Galleria called Needless Markup. I mean, Neiman Marcus. And they have all kinds of gowns. Look at this nonsense, hold on. 
$6,600 for that. I don't think I was dressed properly for this place. Leather. Isn't that? We're leaving Neiman Marcus. It's too expensive. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God yeah. through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word, all kinds of singers in my house. Well, there you have it. That was my week. I do love to eat, but you know, I only eat, I really only eat at most twice a day. I know you're supposed to eat breakfast, but I'm usually never up that early. And if I am, I just have coffee. Um, <clears throat> but I do love lunch and I love dinner. In fact, I'm going out to eat as soon as this show's over. I was going through some old footage on YouTube and I came across... A time when Bill Gaither and I, and I think Tori Taft may have been there, and Russ, somebody, I don't know. We were uh, at one of the Alaskan stops on the Alaskan cruise, how they go up there and they, you know, dock and you get off and you go through the town. Well, we came up on some Indian poles, I forget what you call them, those totem poles, right? Well, Bill Gaither started making up a story about... 
a gospel group, made up names and all, and told a complete story about this gospel group using the totem poles. This is Farmer Lutz. He sang baritone with the Foggy River Boys back in 1949. They started out of Springfield, Missouri. They were on the Ozark Jubilee. Farmer was a pretty good baritone singer. But there came a time when he couldn't hear the pitch, you know what I mean? And sometimes he'd be a note or two above the tenor. And, uh, uh, and the tenor, who was Hobart Evans, he was tired of it, and he said, get rid of Palmer, I am tired of this. Uh, and it, Hobart went out and farmed a quartet on his own. And he found, over here, and he found, when Hobart, when Hobart found Purvis Short, he said Purvis would be the perfect, he would be the perfect second tenor. I think the bass for that group was Hurtis Mislap. Hurtis <laughs> learned, <laughs> learned to sing bass from a well-known bass singer from Atlanta, Georgia, named Asel, uh, A. this is a true name, A-C-E-L, -A Asel Soward, was the original bass singer of the Homeland Harmony Quartet, with Shorty Bradford, Leroy Abernathy, and Otis McCoy sang the baritone. I could talk. I could talk to you about quartet members. Uh, uh, Ad nauseum. Forever. Gifford Vardaman <laughs> played the piano for him for a while. Well, y'all, that goes on and on, and it's so funny. If you go on YouTube and uh, put in Bill Gaither on old gospel singers, you can find that. And then I found this thing where it was David. Uh, me, uh, Michael English, and uh, w they were rehearsing Oh Love That Will Not Let Me Go. At the very end of it, I'm sitting there videotaping it, and I'm so upset that I'm not a part of it. There's, There was five singers in that group, and only four of them were singing. And at the very end, I make my entrance. Enjoy. It's
that's too long ago. <clears throat> B. See, I had to get that note in there. It was very important. Hey, Patty Simpson, Susie Milner Brown, uh, Sharon Mc McEnany, Leslie. Hey, Leslie Lyons. Chris Ladd, hey Chris Ladd, Andrew Walters, Priscilla Bacon Thompson, thank you all for tuning in on Monday nights. I enjoy it. Hey, I told you I was going to give you my review of Paul, an apostle of Christ. Well, here it is. You've fallen victim to March misery, and you got nowhere. I'm sitting in the movie theater about to see Paul, the apostle of Christ. And I'll give you my review when this movie is over. Well, I'm leaving the theater after seeing Paul, an apostle. And at the end, I teared up. I teared up, y'all. And if you love the Bible, if you know the scriptures, <clears throat> even if you don't, I guess, but uh, so many of those scriptures are included um, in this film that Paul is telling Luke and it's just well done I think for a Christian movie um, I think it's really good um, they did whisper a lot that's my only criticism is they did whisper a lot and it looked like Priscilla and Aquila were going to separate for a minute I thought oh lord I didn't know they got divorced but I don't think they did. She was going to stay in Rome and he was going to sneak out to Ephesus with the persecuted Christians because that stinker Nero, he imprisoned Paul and Luke went to visit him and wrote the book of Acts. It's a good movie. Paul, the apostle of Christ. And I tell you another thing, go on an afternoon, the afternoon movies for older people. That way you get out, it's still daylight. Uh, the theater's not that full. It's a windy day out here in Houston, Texas. But listen, you people a little bit older, especially if you're retired, go during the day. Even Saturday afternoons, that'd be better than going at night. So I highly recommend it. Go see it, you guys. Y'all, that is a good movie, but they do whisper a lot. And I don't know if it's me. I don't think my hearing's that bad yet. But when they're talking on the screen like this, and you can barely I have to do all this and get up in it and think, come on, speak up. But I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the movie. It had its moments. Uh, I don't think it is as good as it will be when they have a billion dollar budget like all the big movies do. I think if they had, you know, that those Spielberg kind of budgets, it'd be amazing. So what did you guys think about it? Did you Have you, any of you seen it yet? Okay. Well, listen, uh, our foreign correspondent, Tori Taft, we got to bring her with us. Uh, she made a video. She uploaded it. It's Bell Buckle, y'all. Bell Buckle, Tennessee. If you ever get a chance to go to Bell Buckle, I bet you Tori would even show you around the town. Here's our foreign correspondent, Tori Taft. This is Tori Taft, your foreign correspondent, on the ground here in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. So the part of small town living I wanted to talk about today is called, okay, so I don't really have a name for it, but it's a phenomenon that is maybe true in other small towns, I'm not sure, but in Bell Buckle, ever since I've been here, and I've been coming here about 30 plus years, all of the downtown businesses, this is one, this is the findery, got a whole row of them down there, they leave their merchandise out on their porches, on their sidewalks at night. Like they don't take them inside. Like anybody could come up and steal them. But with a very few exceptions, Nobody does. I don't know. I don't get it. I'll show you some more. This is Hilltop Antiques. More merchandise. Everybody's Antiques. More merchandise. Starting to see a pattern here. 
And here we are at one of my favorite stores in town with the musical accompaniment. <laughs> this is Phillips General Store. I'm gonna do some more on this later. But again, we've got merchandise, we've got sidewalk displays that stay out year round. Now I'm not saying in the history of Bell Buckle there's never been anything taken. But I will say it's the rare, rare exception. Small town values and trust and the golden rule still live in little places like this. So next time you're here, enjoy the fact that there is a place in the world where you can still kind of trust your neighbor. Because everybody needs a little bell buckle in their lives. Tori's a thief. Tori's a thief. I love that Tori Taff. She is so sweet and so funny. And I love Bell Buckle. If you've never been, you've got to go. Hello, Sheila Loggins, Devin Zacharias. Well, it was the exception. If you blink or sneeze, you'll miss it. That is right, Lynn Nathan. Bell Buckle's a tiny town, but that cafe, you know I love to eat. That cafe is gonna is incredible. You've got to go get that chicken fried steak. Hey, next week, funny man Kevin Williams. Let me see if that'll show up. Oh, I can make that bigger. Watch this, y'all. Kevin Williams will be my guest on Mondays with Mark. You know that's going to be a lot of fun. I love Kevin Williams. He's a good, good man, and he's funny, and he can play that guitar. And I may even get him to sing live for us, do that uh, that a song about that gossiping woman he, he wrote. He had something to do with it. It's great. Funny guys will be here, Kevin Williams, next Monday. Let's see what else I've got to... Oh, Dinner Conversations. There's a new one coming out tomorrow about worship with uh, Travis Cottrell. Cottrell. And, uh, and Sandy Patty's on that one, and a bunch of people are on it. It's all about worship, and what is that all about? What does that even mean? And uh, so, But I want to show you that Dinner Conversations doesn't just have serious conversations. There's music. If you've never seen one, go to dinner-conversations.com. In fact, here's uh, an incredible song by Buddy Green and Ron Block, and they let me sing a little baritone on the side. Well, I saw the new Jerusalem city along the deep as it was wide. Coming down out of heaven, beautiful and holy, prepared to be God's bride. Oh, well, there's no more crying in the city, and no more death or pain. Well, everything's made new, it's the gospel truth, and all the old things have passed away. Can you help me now? Oh, what a beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city, God knows it's a beautiful city. Twelve gates to the city, a hallelujah, amen. I didn't see no temple in the city I saw God and the Lamb instead I saw the glory of God giving light And the Lamb was a lamp like the revelator said Oh, well, every tribe, a nation and tongue Well, they were walking together as one And all the kings of the earth were bringing their worth Into the city that needs no sun Can you help me now? What a beautiful city Oh, what a beautiful city God knows it's a beautiful city Twelve gates to the city A hallelujah Amen I'll play it, Ron Block The beginning and the end You know the lion and the lamb The great I am He got a message for every kind of men And he says if you're thirsty Come to the city Come drink from the water of life You know there is no cost Don't stay lost Come inherit your eternal life Can you help me now? Oh, what a beautiful 
beautiful city. Oh, what a beautiful city. God knows it's a beautiful city. Twelve gates to the city. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll do it again, Ron. in the east three gates in the north three gates in the south three gates in the west whoa and that makes twelve gates to the city hallelujah amen oh what a beautiful city oh what a beautiful city god knows it's a beautiful city twelve gates to the city Hallelujah, amen. Mark, I said there were twelve gates to the city. Hallelujah, amen. Ron, you say hell gates to the city. Hallelujah, amen. Yeah. <laughs> now, wasn't that fun? I love that Buddy Green and Ron Block. My brother said that was his favorite episode ever of Dinner Conversations. It may be the only one he's seen. Because my brother loves guitar, loves Ron Block, is a big, huge fan of Ron Block. Well, listen, let's try this. I'm going to call Jeff Steinberg on Skype. And I've usually had them on Skype before. Before we go live, but I had all this other stuff planned that I didn't want him just sitting on hold. So here we go. I'm let's see here. I'm hitting this button right here. Here we go. You hear that? That's the Skype thing. I hope he answers. I hope he answers. Oh 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 oh. Hey. And I've usually had them on Skype before. Hello? And I had all this other stuff. Hello? Hey, Jeff. Hey. So here we did, go. Did I wake you up? Uh, no, I had to get up. My Skype was ringing. <laughs> How are you doing? Man, I'm doing Skype. great. How are you? Hey, aren't you that, uh, that famous, uh, that famous, uh, you need uh, to turn, uh, you need to turn, turn your volume down on that end of the, of the, there we go. Of the recording. Yeah. Get rid of the other guy. Yeah background <laughs> aren't you that famous singer there uh yeah 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 <laughs> jeff steinberg right yeah we yes yeah, steph hey that's what jerry falwell called you did you i looked at a video <laughs> and <of> steph steinberg. <laughs> he said steph and then he, went, he corrected himself jeff when you were 21 years old mm -hmm. you were on the old time gospel hour i was living in houston i was uh 14 15 i don't know I went to Liberty in 75, <clears throat> but I want to show everybody just a little clip of that when Jerry Fall, I thought he was old, but he looks to be about 40-something here. Of course, in 1972, 40-something was very old to me. And this is, let me, let me see where I put it. Here we go, right here. Watch this, y'all. Last Tuesday night, we had the joy in Pennsylvania of meeting a young man that Doug and I agreed well, it was worth the trip just to meet Steph, uh, Jeff Steinberg. Jeff has no arms or legs. He drives an automobile about a thousand miles a week. He's a preacher. He's a teacher. He's only 21 years old. And Jeff asked me, asked me even to mention that he's single. But Jeff uh, Steinberg is a real, dedicated, committed Christian who sings beautifully. I travel down alone. 
And that's all you're going to get because I, we're going to play more. That'll just tease you out there in the audience, Lynn. He was 21 then. He's a little older now. What do you see? What? And better looking. And better looking. And you were born with no arms and no legs, Jerry Falwell. No, no. Jerry Is that, got that wrong. Jerry got that wrong? Jerry got that wrong. All right. What? Ha, what ha, tell us I, your story. I was born with no arms and malformed legs. Okay. Both of my legs were kind of bent toward each other, scissored, kind of like an Indian sits in a powwow, okay. you know, where you crisscross your legs. Uh-huh. Well. My, I was born that way with my legs kind of like that. And in my right leg, there was no joint in the right knee. Oh and, my. And so, uh, the doctors really didn't think I was going to live. And my grandmother was the very first family member to see me. And she called my father at work. And, uh, my father decided that my mother, since I was probably not going to live anyway, that my mother should not be told and so my mom did not know about my disability until I was almost 17 months old. Really? How did they keep that from her? Well, you can you can keep a lot of secrets with help from the hospital. We're, we're waiting for tests. We're waiting for results of tests. There have been complications. And she wasn't allowed to hold you or anything for 17 months? No, nope, no. Nope. In fact, after a while, she started to think to herself, well, if whatever it is they're not telling me is so terrible... Maybe it would be better off if we just died. You know, yeah. sight out of mind, she told me once. You know, and, and, and I, I, I suppose a part of me understands, but a part of me doesn't. You know, uh, I would have, I would have raised, you know, un, unholy heck. Yeah. <laughs> cause, cause, uh, that's just the way it is. Um, I, my grandmother let it slip at the kitchen table. She walked into the kitchen and she sat down behind my mom who was making something for dinner. And she said, Ruthie, he's alive. And my mom just stopped dicing whatever it was she was dicing. And she didn't even turn around. She just said, Mom, why won't they let me see him? Is he ugly? And my grandmother got up and she walked over to my mom and she put her arm around her and she said, no, Ruthie, he's not ugly. He's beautiful. Mm. Has a Yiddish cup, a Jewish face. Yeah. And so uh, you were born Jewish. Yes. And you are Jewish. Yes. But you're a believer in Jesus as the Messiah. Yes. So how did that happen? I'm 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 a catch I'm skipping ahead. ADD's taken over. So you have many, many, many surgeries, or what happens after I, that? I, I, about 25 to 35 plus operations to straighten my legs. Mm. I had uh, therapies and they fitted me for my first leg braces and my first artificial arm when I was four years old. Um, I, uh, I I went to school at Shriners Hospital okay. and I grew up there and I lived there for about five and a half years and then uh, I was allowed to go home but I only got to stay home for about nine months because it was too difficult for my mom to take care of me and three girls. It was the girls, Mark. That we- <laughs> they are a handful, aren't they? It's the girls. That's the problem, you know. So um, after only nine months at home, I was moved to a foster family. Oh. And I lived there for eight weeks. When they finally, the foster parents who had a cerebral palsy daughter, a uh, daughter with cerebral palsy, and they thought that this was going to work because it would help me knowing that I was staying with somebody who had a child that had special needs. Um, my dad came and picked me up. I was about eight, about nine years old. And he drove me, he and my mom drove me 63 miles to the Good Shepherd home for kids with disabilities in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And I lived there for 10 and a half years. I was nine years old. It was Halloween day, 1960. And I went into Good Shepherd and I became a resident there. And I went to public school. And when I was 11 years old, I met a Christian couple who became surrogate mom and dad to me. They uh, took me to camp meetings. They took me to gospel sings. My very first gospel group ever was a group called the Eastman Quartet out of Lynch, out of Lansdale, Pennsylvania. Okay. 
A.R. Damiani and and Ron Landis and uh, Frank Sanchez and oh, Richard Sturban. Are they? Oh, Richard Sturban and and Nick Bruno. Okay, wow, that's a good group. And then uh, and then years later, I became friends with uh, Don Storms and the Envoys. And uh, they, um, and I became and, and but when I was 11 years old, I was in a camp meeting in South Central Pennsylvania. And that's where I gave my life to Jesus. And that's where I decided that that I wanted this Messiah to be my Messiah. And so um, then from at that point till when I saw you at Liberty, how long or on Old Time Gospel Hour, how, how long had you been? How did you get? I mean, you'd learn to drive. He Jerry Falwell said you drove a thousand miles a week. Yeah, and, I, I I wanted to drive in the worst kind of way. Well, and, you called me. You wait. You called me, or we talked to each other yesterday or today. What you were you were uh, it, driving your Uber when he's not singing? He's out in an Uber. Your wife must be a taskmaster making you work that hard. <laughs> I don't know. I I, I uh, it it makes for great stories. Um, I had these girls in the back of my Uber one night, late at night, and they don't look, you know, they're get, they get in the back. And I said, I'll bet I'm the most unique Uber driver you'll ever ride with. And they're like, oh, no, we've had all kinds of weird, you know, yada, yada, yada. And I said, yeah, but I bet you never had any, didn't have any arms. What? <laughs> no way, way, no way, yeah. way. Yeah. Well, how do you drive? I said, fast. <laughs> how do you drive fast? I had a guy. I had a guy sitting beside me and he saw my hook on the wheel and he says, were you born like that? I said, without the hook, <laughs> that would really leave a mark. Yeah, that hook is, you can't, can't be born with those. But kids, kids are great. I had a five-year-old that came up to me and he pointed to my hook and he said, he said, why don't you have any hands? I told him I used to bite my fingernails and one day I went too far. <laughs> he that- said, therapy now i bet that cured that kid of biting his fingernail yeah so now are you traveling full-time now also uh i've I've been on the road for 45 years 45 years are you do you still love it oh yeah 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 i took a little bit of a little bit of uh downtime in 2016 to figure out okay lord what do you want me to do and it was during that time that i started driving uber and and the lord said hey you can have a ministry in the car Oh, that's and true. They can't get away. I mean, I usually wait to tell people that I don't have any arms until I'm doing at least 50. <laughs> I thought about uh, doing Uber when I'm home. I mean, why not? Yeah. You know, it'd well, be fun to meet people and you'd get to learn places. You know, I, I, every Uber driver I talk to says that they've learned more about their city because, you know, you go to places you'd never go. Exactly. Picking up people, delivering people. I, uh, I, I have been doing uh, – I've been in – on the road and uh, singing and speaking. I do comedy. I do. Uh, I sing. I do corporate conventions, awards dinners. I speak in churches, uh, and I talk about the masterpiece that God has designed for us to be. Each and every one of us is a masterpiece in progress. And 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 my, I'm convinced that if you don't like who you are, what you're really saying is that God got it wrong. Right. And 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 there's no way. And if he can use a guy with no arms and mangled malformed legs, four feet, six inches tall, and then think of all the things he could do through you, given the opportunity, yeah. given the chance. And so that's what I do. I am. Uh, uh, that's fantastic. I and I will be celebrating our 25th wedding anniversary. Okay, now when in, in 1972... Uh, Jerry Falwell said you're single and you're looking or whatever. Now, when did you get married? How did you meet your wife? How did that happen? Well, um, uh, Ellen and I met at a friend's place uh, for Thanksgiving. Oh. And uh, we're actually a second marriage, each of us. Um, we're, we're a blended family. One night we got blended. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but... Um, we were at a friend's place for Thanksgiving, and uh, it was uh, at least obvious to Ellen at that point that uh, she thought her friend was trying to set her up. And so, uh, but we became friends, and then we started to see each other, and uh, we got married. And uh, between us, we have four children. 
and nine grandchildren. Hey, uh, Ellen, if you're listening to this, can you come in for a minute? I want everybody to meet my wife. Yeah, let's meet Ellen. Yeah, Ellen? Scooch down here, Ellen. She's coming. She's... And now, how old are your grandkids, or your children? Uh, they are 37, 38, 39, and 40. And your grandchildren are probably in their teens, or... Well, our oldest one is, um, uh... Would be he would be seventeen. Okay, and um, that's something. Yeah, there you are, dear. Good morning. I want Hello, everybody. Ellen. Hello. You've been married to this man for twenty-five years. Yeah. yeah. Take some love, and let me tell you, Mark. <laughs> let me. Now you knew my mother. I did. Tell me about that. When I was at uh, Liberty, um, your mom and I used to go up on the mountain when there was hardly any buildings at all, and we would do devotions in the girls' dorms. Oh. And I remember meeting at your at her house with the piano, and we were discussing what we were going to do when we went up on the mountain. And she just had such a love for those young girls. She was uh, she, she was. Did. Yeah, she loved her students. She'd say, I, she'd get, she talked so much about her students. Me and my brother Mike would get sick of it, you know. My, <laughs> my student, what about us? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so nice to meet Ellen, you. Uh, Ellen also does uh, speaking for ladies' conferences okay. and, uh, on issues having to do with single parents, having to do with abuse, having to deal with uh, prayer and, uh, um, she's pretty amazing. And they can find you. Let me put up your website. Hold on one second. I can do this even while we... It's Jeff Steinberg. Well, there's two of them. For for churches, it's tinygiant.com. Tinygiant.com. Watch this, guys. I can put it right up on the screen. It'll be right in the middle, but I'll move it down. Tiny Giant, I'll put it up here because above your head so everybody can. TinyGiant.com, everybody. And also, you can go to YouTube and, and Google. Uh, I say Google, but you know, in the search engine, type in <laughs> Jeff Steinberg, S T E I N B E R G, a good Jewish name. You know, Jeff, I just recently found out through, I did this DNA thing. Bye, <laughs> Ellen. I did this DNA thing where you spit in the deal and then you send it off and you find out what you are. I am 11% Jewish. Wow. I am so, I was so thrilled. I tell everybody that's the Jesus in me. <laughs> I was going to ask which part of you is Jewish, but I, I think. No, but it's, I'm 11%. Heart. I think it's the heart. I hope so. Because you got, because you got heart. I, I hope so. Well, I sure have enjoyed talking to you. Now, listen, everybody go to tinygiant.com and get to know Jeff Steinberg. Have him in your church. Have him at your banquets. Have him, uh, you can find out all about, I'm sure on your website, there's all kinds of information, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and, and know this, I'm not cheap, but I'm easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, tell me about this song you asked me to play. Is, is it, did you write this? No, um, I have been friends and partners with a guy probably for about 40 years. He, uh, he is now in Independence, Missouri, but he's a singer songwriter and, uh, he was my first piano player and, uh, he traveled with me and I sang just about every song this man's ever written. And, uh, one day we were at an Amway convention singing and, uh, we were listening to the goats. And they, oh, yeah, were doing, them. they were doing their song, The Veterans of the USA. And we were standing outside by the table. And Jeff turned and looked at me and he said, you need a song about America. You need a patriotic song. And I, I looked at him and I said, Jeff, I said, I, I've been thinking about a medley. And he kind of backhanded me a little bit. And he says, no, 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 no. You don't need to sing somebody else's song. You need something written just for you. And I looked at him tongue in cheek and I said, so who am I going to get to write a patriotic song for me? Because, you know, I've sung all of his other songs. Yeah. And he said, maybe I will. That was Saturday. Sunday we left, flew back to Pennsylvania and uh, or Tennessee, where we were living at the time. And he called me Monday night and he said, I've got your, your song. And he sat down and he played it on the piano in my living room. 
And uh, it's amazing. I got together with Don Hart, our arranger. Yeah. Uh, Don is a Grammy nominated arranger. He's oh, amazing. Yeah. He's, He's amazing. amazing. And uh, I said, uh, what can you do with this? And he, uh, this is what he did. 46 piece orchestra and chorus. Uh, guys, you'll know, you'll recognize some of the voices. Um, Ellen Music, uh, Gary, uh, Guy Penrod. Oh, yeah. Gary, um, um, Mark Ivey. Oh, yeah. I love Mark Ivey. Yeah, Good guy. Uh, He's Minister of Music in Jacksonville, correct? Or I, Trinity Baptist, I think it was. Anyway, he's a good guy, and what a singer Mark Ivy is. By the way, while yes. I'm thinking of it, yeah, you and I need to do through it all together. Well, I sent you a video just before the, this taping started of Doug and I doing through it all yeah. at Jeff Falwell's church yeah. at that same I've service. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah. But you and I need to do it together. You know what? The problem is we could do it right now, but the problem is with the delay in the Internet. I've tried that with other people, and <laughs> it gets really wrong because you yeah. can't really keep your words together and your parts together. But we're going to listen to you sing your friend's song, the patriotic song. And it's called This Land. It's called what? This Land. This Land. And I will see you all next Monday, 7 p.m. Central, where Kevin Williams will be my special guest. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for Thank being you, with Mark. us. God bless you. Here's God Jeff. You. Let me get the right video, y'all. Hold on a second. Jeff Steinberg. South and East and West Though I've tried I can't decide which part I like The best There's mountains Valleys, plains and hills Seashores and desert Sands All beauty is rare A gift to share Our Creator's hand This land is filled with people all colors, tongues, and creeds All free to be, to do and see Choose the life they lead From nations all across the earth Far and wide they've come Here they find that welcome kind Place they can call home In this great land A land of liberty A land of hope Opportunity A land where all the people Are truly free And I thank God for giving me This land to call my home Oh, how I this land we call America. This land's a land of freedom, it's weathered every storm. Many gave their lives away that freedom might go on. Oh, let us not forget the sacrifices that they made. Let's give our praise to Him whose grace preserves us still. Today, and this green land, this land of liberty, Land of hope, of opportunity, a land where all the people are true.
be free. 